Before this video starts, I would strongly, strongly recommend modding on a new account because if you happen to upgrade any modded traps or verify dungeons with modded traps or walls, you may get banned. Hey, it's Peter, and today I'm very excited to show you what is essentially creative mode in King of Thieves. You're able to basically create anything you want, but there are limitations on what you're actually able to save. This video is going to go through the whole process of how to set this up. The first step of actually doing this is getting an emulator. So I'm using LD. The reason why using an emulator is highly recommended is because the two applications you're going to be installing are Game Guardian and Kingo Root. Both of those are kind of sketchy and I personally haven't had any bad experiences with them, but still having an emulator with these applications is much safer than having them directly on your phone. So right here, I'm just going to be installing Game Guardian. Make sure you get the correct version. If you're using BlueStacks, uh, make sure you get the one for Nox BlueStacks. And then here, I'm just installing Kingo Root. There is something important you have to do. Uh, in order for your device to be rooted, if it's on an emulator like LD, there's an option in the settings to enable rooting the device. So make sure you have that on and also make sure to restart. Then you just wanna install each of them. It's gonna ask you for permissions and doing these are necessary in order to install both of them, which is why using the emulator is highly recommended. And then after that, on Kangaroo, you have to actually activate it. You do so just by pressing the one touch button, but I already had it activated. If your screen turns black, just let it load or restart your device if necessary. That is all you need to get started. So what I'm going to be doing now is searching for values in the memory and editing them. So you'll see that I search for the value of 64. And that's because the door X position right now is at 64. If I move it one to the right, it's going to be 128. So the door and the totem, as well as the anti-gravity and platforms, their position is tracked by multiples of 64, starting from the left side. And you can see how the, the door, the memory of it that it corresponds to, it keeps changing when I move it. That's how I know I found the door. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna scroll down and go to this specific value and save it. This specific value allows you to spawn in traps, such as the saw. Uh, you'll see I put in the number eight, and that allows me to spawn in a saw once I press save and go back. And this is just any ordinary saw. You could also spawn in other traps, of course. Um, right on the screen, it shows what different traps you're able to spawn in are. Now I'm going to be showing you how to place things off grid. So with this saw right here, with traps, you always also do multiples of 64, except you start with 32. So 32 plus 64, that's going to be 96. That is how we find the exposition of the saw. And because we're also finding the X position, we're able to actually edit it directly. So that's the X and Y position right there. And then I'm gonna go back to the value that identifies it as a saw, the eight. Yeah, so in between the one and the 180, that's how you find the value that identifies what trap it is. So I'm just gonna place it right here. Yeah, right there. And then I'm going to edit the values directly to 256 and 128. And you can see that the saw is going to shift once I go back from saving. And that's how you're able to place traps off grid, but it won't save if you try to save the base at this point. So what you actually have to do is change the trap to a rotatable trap, such as a warder, rotate it, and then leave the game. By doing this, you actually save the position of the trap. And so right now I'm just gonna reload the game. And you can see that the saw is staying in that position. Now I'm gonna be showing you the same thing, but with the totem. So again, with the totem and the door, you search it up first by doing 64 and then moving it over 
128. So yeah, with the totem and the door, it's just multiples of 64, and then with the traps, it's multiples of 64, but starting with 32. And I'm gonna change the value to 894. Save it. And if I try to save it at this point, it wouldn't work. So again, I have to scroll down to the value in between the one and the 180. The totem is a two. We're gonna change that to 42, which is a warder. It's gonna spawn a warder and you're just gonna rotate it and restart the game again. And at this point, you could just save the dungeon as normal. Normally, you would get an error, but this allows it to be saved successfully. If you're trying to test positions, the traps and the door and the totem, anything can be placed anywhere you want as long as you press test it rather than the save. However, if you're trying to save, you can't place traps near the door or traps on top of the totem. There are also limitations if you're trying to save because the door and totem cannot be placed inside the walls, of course. However, they also have a bias towards the right side. So you saw how I was able to place the door like pretty much halfway through the wall on the right side. But if I try to do the same on the left side, it just won't work. Even if I change the value to something like 60, meaning it's slightly to the left, it still won't work. What I've shown so far really is just the tip of the iceberg. Since the developers really aren't updating the game, why not just try to mod the game to have fun? Um, there are a lot of things that I could add in other videos, such as diagonal warders, diagonal red guards, a bunch of other stuff that are being shown in this clips. But another reason I wanted to make this video is because there is one limitation that we still haven't been able to solve, and that is deleting blocks. So we still haven't been able to figure out a way how to do that. Um, there is a YouTuber that showed modded COD videos. Uh, his name is Spybaster, and he showed bases where he only had like one block, meaning that he was able to delete them somehow, or he had an empty base and added blocks afterwards. So if there's anyone that is able to figure that out, let us know. And finally, I like to give credit to QWQ for first posting videos about using this method to mod caught, as well as Random Thief for sharing it with me.